In an ever-changing media world, businesses and advertisers are constantly looking for new ways to sell their products, and strategies such as product placement are coming to the fore. Our next guest is an award-winning expert in this field. She's here to help us negotiate the minefield of product integration in modern media and discuss some of its successes. Joining us on the couch is Senior Channel Manager at Omnicon Media Group, Shireen Jafta. Welcome to Afternoon Express. Thank you. Now, you are obviously, and I mean at the moment, like almost a guru when it comes to marketing and strategies when it comes to broadcasting. I don't know if I'm a guru. <laughs> <laughs> You're getting there. <laughs> Quickly. <laughs> they say an overnight success happens in like over 10 years. Exactly. Um, I think with Fuse, it's kind of evolved in the last 18 months, um, being a senior channel strategist um, at Omnicom Group for the last four years. Um, for me, I think understanding it and, and understanding the dynamics of broadcasting and understanding the dynamics of strategy, it kind of complement, um, complements each other in a sense. Um, you know how to draw in your, your audience because you understand what they want to see and you also know from a strategic perspective what the client's you know, business issues are that they want the, to relate to the consumer. So. Um, trying to find that common ground or that sort of common commonality without yeah. losing interest, um, that's basically what it is. Yeah. It's almost like a unique language, and understanding what people want to hear and what they want to see. It's a fine art, really. It is, because especially if you're buying into content um, and you're planning product placement or active placement or storyline, yes. there are var variables of how you do integration. Um, it's a lot about... Um, you know, it's about building the likability or bringing your brand closer to the consumer. Yeah. Now you're tapping into their spaces. Yeah. So if you're too overt, they uh, kind of switch off and yeah. they might hate it. Or if they if they really entrenched in it, you know, yeah. they're going to love it. Well, so the message has got to be honest, I suppose. Yeah, you've got to find that common ground. Yeah. yeah. So your company recently scooped a gold award and a highly commended award for branded content. Like, congratulations. What what does it feel like to be able to have such high acclaim? Well, in the media industry, um, I think the Amasa Award that used to be um, Roger Garlic. So yeah. last year they changed the whole award ceremony and they called it Amasa. Um, and Roger Garlic, if you go back in history from a media perspective, is almost like the Luris from a media perspective. So uh, this is where strategists are being recognized for strategic innovation. And yeah, I mean, f you know, for Think Big, it's just been amazing. Yeah, you won for Think Big. What was the show about exactly? Because you didn't use any presenters or media people per se. You used professionals yeah. or business professionals. Yeah. Kind of so Think Big was a television show and it was linked strategically because we needed to drive people from, we needed to drive people obviously to a banking portal. Now, when yeah. you think about banking websites, you think, well, you know what, I'm only there to do transactions. And what we needed to do was we, we wanted to empower um, entrepreneurs. And the only way we could do that was to use a mass platform and yeah. pull them in and share the type of, pull them into online and share the type of tools that we wanted them to use. Amazing. And that's basically what we did. It's, it's, it's such a necessity because I suppose everything nowadays will, is online. I mean, um, tell me about the host of the show and how so, you went about selecting the hosts. Yeah, I can't take credit for all. <laughs> <laughs> there was an entire team, I promise. So Nubuntu and um, you've got Nubuntu Webster. Um, I mean, she's like a motivational speaker and also exactly. a marketing guru in her own right. Um, and then you have Derek who is a sort of guru when it comes to small businesses and they were select based on their skill and obviously understanding the the small enterprise business um, it was easier to have and bring the realism of non-scripted type of uh, show across so that you know people can resonate with it and that's what you wanted yeah. to do you wanted you wanted to come across as more approachable to them exactly. um, Derek had a skill that if he had to just look at financials he was able to tell the entire story of a business oh, wow so that's that the was of me. <laughs> yeah. That was really amazing. And uh, Nubuntu could, I mean, she could determine whether they, all they basically needed was just a marketing plan, you know, sure. just to put their business out there, wow. you know, and between the two of them, I, I, I really think that they were dynamic. Amazing. Now, what yeah. about the finalists? How were they selected? So the finalists um, were selected on a, um, 
what we had was we had uh, different businesses from different sectors because the type of tools that we wanted to share was obviously we wanted to pull in people and wanted to share different trends and tools that um, covered whether it was an agri good was manufacturing or it was um, in the service or marketing um, and a lot of the time I think um, using the TV show as the conduit was a positioning um, sort of tool in terms of helping and empowering small yeah. enterprises or, or small businesses. Um, and one, one, we knew that there's always a lack of mentorship. Yeah. So driving them to the portal um, sort of just helped them with the, with the tools that they needed. Well, Did you were I actually know, involved in one. another show like that called Business Coach, was it? Yes, yeah, so that's kind of how the journey of you started. Um, when I joined Omnicom Group, they'd acquired a TV show called Business Coach. And for me, it was just natural. It was a natural flair. Um, I kind of just started new strategist, first brief, and yeah, we ran with it. And, and it actually built in, I mean, it, it built that loyalty and that love, I, I think, for the brand. Yeah. yeah. And I mean, this isn't something new. This is something that we've been seeing, like, on James Bond films for, like, the past 50 years. How is it, how is it modernized? So it's not new. Um, I think with the transition of... Uh, mobile becoming the first screen and telev television will become your second screen. We yeah. know that people view mobile more. So even globally, you'll see that now you've got TV shows like Game of Thrones or Extant and they like these six parts, right? Yeah. Um, as opposed to blockbusters. That's because the networks are trying to change behavior to drive you and create content for mobile. Wow. Um, and it's going to become a lot more interesting because a lot of people already on, I think like on social sites, when, when people people go into ad break, you see the spike in social media sites. And exactly. then they come back and then they watch their content. So I'm completely <laughs> guilty of that. <laughs> so, so you'll see that um, there's a shift in terms of how to attract a consumer from a marketing perspective. But there's also that making sure that you don't lose the credibility, which exactly. is what I wanted to mention earlier, the yeah. credibility of the content. So it's got to be smooth and, and you're tapping into that exactly. space. Yeah. All right. We're going to be back on the couch with you in a little while to chat so much more. After the break, Danilo makes us barbecue glazed angelfish filled fried buns. <gasps> if you think that's a mouthful, wait until you see what he's making. And more from Shireen Jafta. We'll be right back after this. Apply for a Nedbank home loan today and stand a chance to win 100,000 rands worth of home decor to help turn your new house into a dream home. Go to winnerhome.tv for more info. Let Nedbank help you make the things that really matter happen. Welcome back to Afternoon Express. I'm going to need to take a really big breath right now to get the name of this dish we're making on the show today out. So it's a barbecue glazed angelfish filled fried bun. Did okay. I get it right? You actually did. Well done. Legend. Clem, cool to have you in the lot with us today. So that is a mouthful of a dish. It's a mouthful of a, of a piece of thing to put in your mouth, I'm sure, as well. Mm -hmm. First of all, angelfish. Why? Because it's responsibly sourced. And it's on the sassy green list. Okay. And I think that's a conscious, conscious decision we all need to make. Right. And that's my choice for using it. And it tastes amazing as well. Mm. What's so special perfectly. about this fish, though? I, we'll get into it as we go yeah. along. I'm keen to find out more because I've never cooked it we're gonna before. We're going to start cooking it right now so okay. we can talk about it a bit. It's quite. It's got a firm texture. Um, you know you're putting that into a pan that's off. Do you want it on? Totally. I mean, what's <laughs> the difference? It's fine. There we go. I got your back, man. I no got worries, your back. No worries. All good. So into our now hot pan, mm -hmm. olive oil. I use angelfish for this recipe because it's quite dense and you don't want to use a fish that's too flaky. Or brittly or It's going to fall apart as you're busy cooking it and while you're busy glazing it. Okay. So I would also use hake. I mean, hake tends to sometimes be flaky, but if you get a nice firm piece of hake, mm. you're sorted. You're good with that. But try something new. I'm keen to experiment with new pieces of fish. So angelfish it is. Another thing is, okay, don't worry about that. This is quite hot. It starts sizzling. It's changing color already. Cool. Angelfish, um, like I was saying, it's, it's, it's not very flavorful yeah. in a sense. It's got that um, ocean flavor fish, which is different mm -hmm. to a freshwater fish. It is much more fishy, like it's a fishier fish. Uh, uh, well, I, maybe not, maybe <laughs> okay. not, maybe not, maybe not. We'll have to test but that theory out. for okay. that reason that it doesn't have a very strong fishy flavor, yes. I'm going to glaze it with other flavors okay. and enhance the flavors of the actual sandwich. Cool. Because essentially what this is, is a fish sandwich. All right. But as in life, you give it a little more love, a little more attention, and it becomes something special. Cool, amazing. That's what you thought. So you hear me getting all deep there? I see. It's all emotional. <laughs> I'd like to write a blog. 
food, maybe, the maybe. emotional side of food. There we no? go. Another thing? So we don't have to cook the fish through now. We're yeah. going to finish cooking it in the glaze. So okay. I'm going to get the fish going. We're going to just let them give it a few more seconds. Cool. Let's talk about the glaze, what we're going to do. Sure. So once the fish is um, just colored lightly on both sides, it's going to come out. I'm going to use the Willie's Sweet Barbecue Marinade. Ooh. It's absolutely insane. Pre-done pre pre for you, so. Everything's done. Cool. Now I'm going to ask you and give you the responsibility and the task Never. of balancing out all the flavors for Never our glaze. Never give me responsibility. Okay, hold it. What so, Tabasco chipotle. I mean, let's just talk about amazing chipotle. flavor. Chipotle, we cooked with this yesterday. I must say, I feel like Tabasco's kind of cheating us by giving us such small bottles. Yes. They do have those really big ones, though. Yeah. I just don't know about the chipotle. Sure, that hits and like splashes back at you. Thanks for telling me that. No, but don't worry because I mean, remember the part where I said once we color both sides Ow. of the fish, we'll start adding it. Uh, but you know I'm what? Just, it's okay. I'm just excited. No, we, we it's come fine. in. We prepared. We prepared. We've got this. <laughs> and who knows? That could be like an amazing addition to the recipe. Yeah, exactly. Before the fish is cooked, <laughs> douse it in Tabasco. You see, South Africa, this is why I like him. Even though I'm messing things up in his kitchen, he's still complimenting me, making me feel good. All right. So we're gonna change things now. Okay. Thanks to Danilo, we're just gonna, we're just gonna go with it. We're just gonna go with it. <laughs> okay. So the fish is almost cooked. It, it, the fish doesn't take that long to cook. Mm. Like I said, it's quite dense and quite meaty. I would give it about a minute aside in a really hot pan. Okay, cool. So we've got the Tabasco in there. Done. There we go. Some of the marinade. And this is going to be our base flavor. Okay. We've added the um, the bit of the, that vinegary punch from the Tabasco. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to ask you to add some more um, acidity to the actual, to the dish. Cool. So I love using vinegar in Same all my way. recipes. You know, you keep on going. Wow. Remember the last time we tried to get a flambe? Yes. Should we try again? Oh, heaven. I'm just, I'm, I'm just like... You know what's gonna happen? It's gonna happen next time. One it's day, gonna happen one next day time. we'll get this to work. One day. Does vinegar light on fire? I never knew that, by the way. It does, yeah. And like, like alcohol. Maybe what we should do is just it's move the this fumes. off the stove and just like throw it at the Well, next time we're just actually gonna flamethrower. We're just attacking the thing. We'll get deodorant things and we'll start spraying deodorants if we there can. There we go. No. Okay, cool. Done no. and done. <laughs> okay, so, so a little chief, like just for that extra heat. Okay, And more, um, more I don't heat. know how. We feeling today? I'm feeling. That's that's there feeling go. pretty good. That's feeling good. I know the ladies also do like a little bit of a awesome. little bit of a punch, so maybe that is a good idea. And obviously, all of these recipes and ingredients and things. If you guys want to know where they are on our website, afternoonexpress.co.za, you can also find the shopping list available for you over there. All these ingredients are readily available for you at Woolies. Absolutely right? easy recipes cool. with ingredients you can find on every single Woolies shelf. What's next, by the way? So now the idea is the glaze starts glazing the fish. I mean, that's what it's got okay. to do. So the sauce starts reducing, which you can already see is happening. Okay. And as it's busy reducing, we just turn the fish over. Amazing. So we'll show you how to do the rest of this recipe later on, how to get it onto those buns, etc. In the meantime, though, the ladies are on the couch. Thanks, Danilla. That looks absolutely delicious. We're back on the couch with, of course, our fantastic guest. So you I'm very fascinated about product placement when it comes to television. And you've done work where you integrate product placement into soapies. Yes. How do you do it in such a way that the audience reacts to it almost unknowingly? So there are three variables of how to do product placement. So product placement is not just like putting your brand out there. Yeah. Um, and, and I think that's kind of where there's a bit of a miscommunication a lot of the time. Product placement is, for argument's sake, if you saw um, a, say, an ATM, right? And somebody passes it, or you see a logo, or you see a sports figure or anything, or yeah, a logo. Yeah. That's about one or two seconds. So it's it entrenches in the mind. Like a subliminal It's a subliminal message. thing. Yeah. Then active placement is obviously way of action. So for instance, uh, someone would say, I just want to stop at the AT money to draw money. Yeah. But you're not mentioning the brand because it's natural. You're not going to stand at a bra and say, hey, listen, I have to go to this bank yeah. to do that. <laughs> yeah. you know? But it's the success of that so that when we watch that on a soap, we go, oh, shucks, I actually also have to go and draw money. <laughs> no, so the success of that is obviously it's top of mind in yeah. terms of active and, and uh, passive placement. I call product, it's so product placement, active, passive, and then yeah. you get storyline integration. And a lot of the time with storyline integration is where you find two actors that are actually playing a role. So they're trying to demystify what it is that the business challenge is for a company. For instance, if packaging was an issue with a particular product, the two characters would play out, you know, there's a problem yeah. with this. And, and by way of that, you're actually educating yeah. that viewer of why you did the packaging yeah. in a certain way. Wow. Well, I mentioned so, the Bond films earlier because they've, they obviously have been doing it for many years. What examples can you give us from that, from that example? 
from the Bond movies. Yeah. There's like the car, the Aston, Aston Martin, Martin the, yes. you've got the, the, the watch. watch. And I think the new Bond movie's got like over 44 product placements in oh, there. Wow. Um, and obviously there's always an Apple product in ev almost every film you see. And you hear that famous <laughs> ring. Yeah. They're yeah. very yeah. subtle, very integrated. If it's a new product, a lot of the time when you have, perhaps if it's a financial product or it's something that you've got to educate someone about, you do need to integrate it okay. in like those three pillars. If it's a brand that everybody loves and there is no education about your product, like in the Bond, you know, the Aston Martin, everybody knows what it's about. Yes. So product placement or passive placement and active placement, I mean, that works. You know, you yeah. can identify with those brands. So congratulations is in order because you were uh, featured in the Forbes Africa Women's Magazine and Destiny Disney's Magazine named you one of their top 40 women. Yes. Yeah. That's amazing. How does that feel? <laughs> and the industry is just throwing awards at you. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> To be honest, it's actually very, it's happening organically. It yeah. comes with no effort. You yeah. know, I always say, if you love what you do, you mm. don't have to work a single day in your life. Exactly. And I think that's kind of, that's just happened. And, yeah. and it is kind of surreal because I'm wondering, like, why when all yeah. I'm doing is I do what I love. Yeah. Yeah. But you do work exceptionally hard to the point that, that your health was really badly affected. Yes, so um, I was at SABC. And um, a few years ago, I'm working on a project called Heartlines with Mandela when he oh, endorsed yes, it. Yes. yes. So I was diagnosed with uh, cancer. So I had bladder cancer at my age. <laughs> And I sat down thinking, so here I am, a mother, what's the legacy I want to leave behind it? Mm. Um, you know, if anything had to happen with me or anything had to, you know, my kids could lose their parent, where do I take it from here? Um, and I put my heart and soul into, you know, trying to make the best out of that project that it actually was basically the the project that taught me how to do brand content effectively oh, because wow. one was you had eight episodes but you had to make it a national conversation so it was eight weeks yeah. eight values one national conversation wow. how did you get make that a national conversation was obviously to get someone like Mandela to endorse it and start the conversation yeah. and I think during that stint coordinating all that activity the show the promos the buy-in the endorsements um, the show in eight weeks uh, sort of generated over 3,000 PR pieces. Wow. So how do you weave that all in and keep wow. it all together, wow. you know, on that wow. level? Um, I didn't even, to be honest, I mean, I didn't feel anything. I just threw everything in Into there. Work. But my health deteriorated. Yeah. Um, I was actually fascinated when I was reading your story because actually what you resorted to was, rather than throwing yourself into work, was actually a few home remedies that actually made you feel and... So and not only did you feel win better. the fight, you yeah. came back with some tips for us. Yeah. <laughs> so when I had cancer... Um, I had uh, my hair fell out at the back, so I had a bit of hair here and uh, uh, you lose your hair. Um, very minimal because there is no like a chemo thing for bladder cancer. You actually go into theatre and so it's called a cystoscopy and they, they scrape it like they would skin cancer and then you take like an antibiotic after. But it does affect your skin. You become, your skin becomes dry and mm. you know, your hair starts so falling out. And that. So I mean, I went to just about everything in terms of uh, all these beauty things that we have to do, like uh, the toner, the cleanser, the peel and everything and until my grand said you know what actually let's try baking soda wow baking we actually have an example <laughs> set over here if you want to show us yeah, how, you, how you did it because this is fascinating to me i need to know how you worked it and what happens did it make your hair grow back well, so what what it basically does is um, hello. <laughs> you're not getting big. Okay, so what did it do? So um, I have almost no pigmentation, like really almost mm -hmm. nothing. Yeah. And what it did was it it also strengthened my hair, um, and you know the natural shine, and and it started growing faster because the baking powder <laughs> actually opens up the cuticles. On your hair, on your scalp. Right. I'm finished. Right. So it right. kind of yeah. detox. It's like a detox. Yeah. Yeah. Because scalp care is essentially skin care. Yeah. Because yeah. yes. your hair grows. And from it your removed skin. all of your pigmentation and made your hair grow back. So <laughs> it's not an overnight thing. Like I said, I used it for a very long time, <laughs> two years. 
Um, it's something that you can do. Uh, now I only do it like once or twice a month when I really feel like I need to do it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, gradually you'll actually start seeing the difference. Yeah. And we haven't branded the baking soda, so this isn't product placement. <laughs> but gee, watch product, watch baking soda sales. <laughs> so yeah. now well, that I'm going to buy some the minute I Definitely. leave today. <laughs> it's a miracle. <laughs> it's not a miracle. They say use uh, white vinegar and it helps with dandruff. Yeah, yeah, when you rinse your hair with I it. I drink apple cider vinegar. Not yeah. apple cider. Oh, not no, just no. white one. It could I drink be apple, apple cider. cider. I don't know. But yeah, yeah. Um, you know what? I just res resorted going back to like home remedies for my skin, for my hair. And I mean, people would, like use horse shampoo and use this. And I just find a lot of <laughs> those products are so diluted. And eventually, <laughs> if it's not made for your hair, how's it going to help you? You know? No, I've used horse um, shampoo to try and make it grow quicker. And did it and work? It just makes it dry. dry. It <laughs> makes it so dry. I need so much. Okay, okay so, so what are we going to so do you've here? you've got to... Okay, hold this. Your hair's going to grow, darling. <laughs> and how, no, many, it's not. how many times a month would you use this? You said twice. twice I a month. use it twice a month, but you can use it like once a week. Because I think what it does is like it just takes off all that it's toxins it's like and it strips it everything. Yeah, so I would shampoo my hair. Oh, it's not shampooed. Okay. Um... I would uh, shampoo my hair, put my conditioner on, and put this on top of the conditioner. Oh, right. So okay. then just leave it on like a mask. And I think she'll start feeling her scalp. It feels like it's bubbling a bit. It's tingling. Can you, what can you feel? It's cold. <laughs> oh, really? But is it tingling or...? She'll start feeling it eventually. Yeah, slightly. It's like... Um... If it's tingling, it's working. <laughs> yeah. It's like the bubbles. <laughs> you can feel the bubbles. So it's bubbling on it. Don't worry, this is safe. But you can... <laughs> yeah, so you'll start feeling it in your scalp, I mean... Yeah, it tickles. That it is does. amazing. It tickles. Yeah. It like tingles. Yeah. Awesome. Well, after the break, Danilo wraps up our dinner in the kitchen and we get under the skin with radio presenter and model Twala Ngamba Ngambi. <laughs> Sustainable fishing that leaves fish for the future. Are you with us? Well, welcome back to Afternoon Express. So I love seeing the tweets that you guys are sent through during the ad breaks. Mandy was saying how she's so hungry that I'm cooking in the kitchen here and she can just smell all those flavors coming from the kitchen. And I agree because it smells delicious in here, but that chili. <laughs> And the vinegar is getting us right in the sinuses, but then we're doing it right. We're okay. We're That's okay. how we know we're doing it right. Okay, all cool. good, all good. So, Clem, so what's next? So, as you can see, the fish is beautifully glazed, looking awesome. I'm going to give you some work for me, please, for the sure. next part. So, we're going to do a simple slaw. Okay. All I need is some cabbage, coriander, spring onions, and chili tossed together in a bowl. Oh, yeah. A little okay. bit of lime juice. That I'm not going to worry about an extra dressing. Lime juice is enough. We've got enough flavor happening. Cool. While you're doing that, what I've done is I've just toasted some normal buns in a pan, a little bit of butter, mm -hmm. split them open, and this isn't the idea with this one. So, awesome for entertaining using either teacups or little ramekins you stand in the buns straight up and just put the fish in like that instead of serving them in plates actually as your guests walk in they grab a little ramekin oh, walk away cute man so it's like a little canopy in its there own we go. in its own right cool. so by the way i think i'm doing this so wrong with this coriander am i meant to be breaking it up there is no wrong way uh, okay cool you're Fantastic. doing it absolutely right cool this can be so um here. The fish is really, um, like I said, the, the fish is really spicy, sweet already. So I'm not going to add too much of a dressing to the slaw that you're busy making. Lime juice is absolutely enough. Cool. So um, Can I stop putting some of that in, by the way? I haven't yeah, totally. So I'm going to pass it to you. You give your... What do I do with this stuff? What is this stuff here? Yeah. I'll tell you all about it. So what you give, you give that a toss. you got your little tongs there. Mm -hmm. You sort it. And then you can start stuffing them. So what Ooh. I've got... <laughs> easy, easy. What I've got is a um, sour cream dip. And all I've done is just add a little more flavor. That's what we're doing okay. every day, all day. It's here on this side if you're wanting it. Yeah, sure. So the sour cream dip that you're going to use. Pack in the fish. So um, what I did was just add a little bit of lime juice to that. I'm going to do a move in a second just to come around you. Mm -hmm. And Dancing once again, in the just a little bit of lime just to add a little um, extra acid to it, a little flavor. Mm -hmm. And then the last ingredient that I want to do, which one you got for me? Just put on this one. There I'm we go. Awesome. Make one in. Just like that. Last ingredient, just a little Ooh. bit of extra crunch, some nacho chips. Why oh, not? Oh, lacquer. Just crunch them on the outside. And if it gets everywhere, I mean, who's complaining? And you're going to do those for me. I know we do chips. There. I'll do them all for you now in the next few seconds or so. But if you guys want to do this as well with us, write you on Afternoon Express. AfternoonExpress.co.za is our website. You can find the recipe and shopping list over there. Bonnie, over to you. Now, you've heard her voice on the radio and seen her face in campaigns, but you probably didn't know that Twyla Gumby's carpentry skills could probably put most to shame. She even makes her own furniture. It's time to get under the skin with Twyla. 
Acting a demure figure, it's not hard to believe this young woman started a career in modeling and radio whilst at varsity and is literally the architect of her own empire. My name is Twala Gambi, so I'm known as that on the streets. Digitally, I'm at I am Twala. Voice-wise, you may recognize me, um, or my voice at least, as a host. I'm also a model, a fashion designer, and brand ambassador. A lot of people see the sort of razzle-dazzle fashion side. Very few people know that I'm actually really good with my hands when it comes to carpentry and woodwork. Um, I've built my own walk-in closet. A lot of my furniture at home I've built myself. Um, and it started a long time ago. Primary school, actually. Um, I went to Pines North and woodwork was an actual lesson. Um, so we learned how to do everything from sanding to cutting to varnishing things. I actually bought a few things. Like I, this is from grade four. It's meant to say mom, but I was young and inexperienced. Um, I made this in grade six. You can use it as a jewelry thing. Um, and then in grade seven, I made this really cute fruit basket um, for my mom, whose kitchen at the time was yellow. But yeah, I've gone from making little things to literally making the furniture that's in my apartments today. Twale is clearly a woman who can fend for herself, but would she let us in on the secret to her healthy, gorgeous skin? As a somewhat reformed tomboy, I do very little to nothing. Um, I cleanse, I tone, I moisturize. That's pretty much it. I do get the occasional pimple from club pores due to makeup and that kind of stuff, but um, I wouldn't quite say adult acne is a thing for me now. Now, from the odd pimple to a face full of acne, everyone gets it from time to time. Joining us on the cast to discuss adult acne is Dr. Dilshad Asmar and Twyla. Welcome to The Loft. First of all, I can't believe you make all that furniture with those well-manicured nails. Well, I try to keep them as short as possible, but <laughs> other than that, they've got to have a little colour. <laughs> That's incredible. So, doctor, we all know that hormones play a large role in causing acne. People know very little about the fact that pH in acne or pH in skin affects acne. pH is actually potential hydrogen. And this is the level of the acidity or the alkalinity of a solution. And pH right. ranges from about 0 to 14, with your neutral pH being 7. So anything below 7 would be acidic, and anything over 7 would be an alkaline solution. Right. Now, what happens is that the skin has a pH of about 4.5 to about 6.5, and this is called the acid mantle of the skin. Mm. So what happens is that if you have acne, you have a higher acidic solution. I see. As and this would cause your pea acnes, your bacteria that causes acne, right. to proliferate. So controlling your pH is quite important. Very important. So we're discussing a product called Dermalex Acne today, which helps with adult acne and just modifying the pH in the skin. Please tell us about it. Well, Dermalex is a good product. It basically has natural cleansing ingredients and it creates this pH of four. So a milieu in the skin that is very good because wow. it causes the pea acnes, the bacteria, not to overgrow and not to proliferate. Oh, that's incredible. Twala, you have gorgeous skin and you say you've never yeah. struggled with, with acne. Is it because of your genes or is it anything in particular that you do? Now that I'm older, people always say, you know, you've got to eat healthy and exercise and drink water. Um, knowing my dad's history when he was younger, acne was a thing for him. So I'm going to just oh. assume it's because I'm so active. Um, and I drink a lot of water. Like, oh, wow. you can't get enough wow. of that. Are there any natural ways that we can make sure that our pH level stays at 4, 4.5 for our skins? Not really. You know, wow, it's wow. an innate quality. Right. But obviously, if you use a good product, you'll definitely help to create the pH that your skin actually needs. Yes. And anyone watching at home who's struggling with acne, because struggling from acne is such a, a confidence buster, what advice do you have for them? Like I've said before, don't pick don't squeeze. Don't pick, don't the darker squeeze. you are, the more you scar and the more you pigment. Oh. So obviously it's not a good idea to do right, that. Right. And then get into a simple routine. It mm -hmm. doesn't have to be expensive. Mm -hmm. You can use the good products at the pharmacy. Your pharmacist is well versed in actually helping you. Wow. And also there's this misconception that the thicker you wear your makeup, the more it hides you know, all the blemishes. And obviously, right. I mean, it's what we would do, but the more oilier the product is and the more thicker it is, the more occlusive the worse, it is. The product and the it's more acnegenic or comedogenic. So sure. get on to normal, you know, 
oil-free based products. Definitely, yeah. I mean, I use an oil-free um, mm. base on my skin. Yeah. Although, once you find a really good product, how often are you supposed to be washing your face? Some people say twice a day, others say whenever you get hot and sweaty or if you wear makeup. Yeah. Is, is there a sort of healthy number of times that you should be washing your face? I think twice a day. Twice yeah. a day. Remember that yeah. if you also overwash your face mm. and over scrub your face, you're actually doing your skin a lot, a of, lot harm. of harm. Thank you so much for joining us today, ladies. <laughs> Thank you for having us. If you're watching with us, join the conversation on Facebook and Twitter at Afternoon Chat using the hashtag, hashtag Dermalexacne, where we're discussing ridiculous acne remedies you've tried or heard of. After the break, we chat to international model Candice Boucher and Danilo learns a few facts about green tea. We'll be right back. Groundbreaking treatment for acne. Welcome back to Afternoon Express. With her alluring eyes and gorgeous smile, she has graced the pages of many well-known magazines and appeared in advertising campaigns for major international brands. Apart from her modeling career, she is also an actress and was the female lead in the 2011 Bollywood movie, Azan. Joining us on the couch is the most beautiful woman in the world, <laughs> Candice Archer. Hi. Candice, you. you literally are the most sensational looking thing on the planet. Were you always, please make all of us yes. girls feel a lot better, did you have awkward years growing up? Uh, my whole uh, school career uh, was very awkward. I was always the tall one. Um, I didn't speak to anybody. I was very shy. Um, I was awkwardly tall. Um, so, yeah. It wasn't great. It wasn't great. Thank goodness. <laughs> <laughs> Life is fair. And then what, uh, what about that moment when you were discovered? Did you have one of those discovery moments like Candace Swanepoel and Charlize Theron? I don't. I don't have a, a beautiful story like that, unfortunately. Um, yeah. There's a school pageant. Yeah. When I was in Standard 8, so that's grade 10, I think. Um, and I won that. Um, my photos were sent to an agent and they contacted me and we kind of took it from there. And you were only 18 years old and literally thrown into traveling and amazing campaigns. No, 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 no. <laughs> Not the oh, campaigns. How did it no. start? Um, yes, I had to travel overseas. I was 18 years old. Um, I was sent to Japan. That was my first overseas trip. That was uh, nerve-wracking and horrifying at the same time, but I learned a lot there. Yeah. Um, and then kind of I came to Cape Town. I was here for about two, three years before things really got started. Yeah. And, yeah, I think kind of just been lucky. Then the campaigns eventually did start, and then so did the, the swimsuit campaigns. I mean, your body is ridiculously famous <laughs> for being on an island somewhere in a, magi in a <laughs> magical setting with incredible bikinis. And then from there, you were chosen to do Playboy Worldwide. Now... Look, if I had your body, I would appear naked everywhere, all the time. But that must have been quite an amazing thing for your career, but also you were naked. Very I naked. I was. I was. Um, look, uh, it was a lot of back and forth with me and the photographer, and I kind of said yes, finally, because it was out in nature. It was with animals. Yeah. It was a bit of a more artistic feel yeah. to it. Um, the, For those the, that haven't seen it, actually, and I recommend you to <laughs> Google it, it's, you were completely, it was so tastefully done. It was art. It wasn't really your traditional playboy hair. Because I think there was a lion walking behind you when you were in the, like, safari place. Oh, that was so, so uh, crazy. We actually drove around for four days looking for a lion, and um, people see the picture now, and they go to me, um, this was photoshopped, and I'm like, no, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> cars in between the two of us, and getting ready to do the shot and they kind of pulled out and I saw that the lion's pupils dilate to about this size and I kept looking around <laughs> trying to see if this thing was moving. Um, but yeah, I don't, I don't know if I could do that again. Wow, that was tremendously brave. Being naked and shooting with the lion <laughs> was tremendously <Right>. brave. <laughs> and then you, you went into acting. Tell us about Azan. Bollywood must be an incredible. Um, I don't really say that I'm doing acting. Um, it was a <laughs> once-off thing. Um, I've worked with this director many times on music videos um, and other things. He uh, got a hold of me and he asked me if I'd be interested in doing this part, and it was challenging. Yeah. Uh, I thought it would be something new to do. 
Um, they first wanted me to do it in Hindi, which is an epic disaster. Um, so we changed it back to English because the, uh, the guy kept laughing <laughs> at me. <laughs> did you, did you, can you remember any words in Hindi? Mm, it was something like, Tumari uh, hato mehai, something like that. Sounds it's, good to me. <laughs> it's quite a hectic scene to do and yeah. I'm dying and he couldn't stop <laughs> laughing. Oh my goodness, you so, are yeah, absolutely yeah. sensational. Thank we're going to see you on the little catwalk in a little while. But for now, we're going to take a quick commercial break. It's time to share another moment with Five Roses. So next time you're in the supermarket buying tea, look out for their refreshing new green tea range, which offers all the amazing health benefits associated with green tea. With us in the loft today is our favorite tea master, Dinesh, who will be telling us more about the new range of green tea. So now, Dinesh, it's an awesome to have you with us in the loft today, just because... I want to help you clean up your system on the inside. We'll be sipping on some green tea here. We've Thank spoken you. quite a lot about sourcing, blending. Tell, about, tell us about this new range of, of green teas. Thank you. Uh, thank you for the opportunity of being here. Um, we have four new flavors, uh, four new different types of green tea that we have put into the market now. And the first one is called Perfectly Pure. Mm -hmm. This is a normal pure green tea that has been manufactured according to the time-honored Chinese tradition. Which we'll be sipping on here. This is what you are having uh, right now. So it's a refreshing and delicate flavored tea, uh, giving you all the goodness that green tea brings along. Uh, then we also have uh, three new flavors. Now, when developing flavors, we need to have a really good quality base that mm. doesn't interfere with the flavors and brings out the correct uh, profiles. And that's what we have uh, in this range that we have put out. So the first one is apple and pear. Uh, oh. It's a combination of a crisp apple and a sweet pear. So that gives you a blend that is well-rounded uh, and delicate and refreshing. Mm. Then we have a lemon and lime, which brings out all the zesty uh, citrus notes, uh, giving you a really invigorating and great tasting cup of tea. Lovely. And lastly, we have the mint flavor. Now, mint is one of the most uh, popular flavors worldwide in tea. Mm. And our mint flavor is a cool and calming sort of drink, uh, giving you that burst of mint flavor when you taste it. Sure, it sounds delicious. It's a nice way to get people into drinking green tea. Absolutely. Why has there been such a trend around green tea? What are some of the health benefits? Every day, they are finding new uh, things that are good about green tea. Definitely, it has a lot of polyphenols, which is antioxidants that actually fight free radicals in your body. So it helps any healing process. It's known to be good for dental care. Uh, it's known to be good for your stomach. Uh, it reduces or it increases your metabolic rate. There are lots of reasons why green tea should be drunk. Absolutely. I know one of the things that I remember moving on to green tea, the first fear of mine was I heard there was so much caffeine in green tea, maybe more than coffee. Is that true? No, that's not true. Uh, green tea has very little caffeine, oh. uh, less than coffees and also normal black teas. Um, and yeah, it's you need to link, drink a lot of green tea for the caffeine to really affect you. Sure. So. Learning yeah. new things every day. I should probably drink this down as fast as I can to make sure my body ends up much healthier. Dinesh, it's always an absolute pleasure chatting to you in the loft. Thanks for joining us. Thank you very much for having me. Stand a chance to win a fabulous Five Roses gift pack containing a range of delicious green tea flavors such as apple and pear, lemon and lime, mint, and the classic original green tea. SMS the keyword Five Roses, your name and city to 33728. SMSs are charged at 1 Rand 50 and T's and C's apply and are also available on our website afternoonexpress.co.za. Well, with all of these interesting facts, you can be assured you're making a discerning choice when you enjoy the new Five Roses green tea variant until next week remember nobody makes better tea than you and five roses five roses blends only the top two leaves of the finest salon teas because nobody makes better tea than you and five roses show them how much you love them with bob martin
Welcome back to Afternoon Express here on SABC3. Now, everyone here at Afternoon Express would like to congratulate Top Billing for winning favorite local TV program at the 2015 Best of Joburg Viewers Choice Awards. This is the third time they've walked away with this prestigious title, but that's not all. Our very own Jeannie D was awarded <laughs> favorite TV personality, <laughs> an honor which she has won a total of five times. Can I get a woo woo? <laughs> Thank you, Molly. <laughs> so sweet. So for, for award-winning entertainment, make sure you tune in for Top Billing this evening at 7.30 right here on 3. Lorna visits the majestic Cranford Country Estate in the KwaZulu Natal Midlands for the wedding of former Miss SA Nicole Flint and entrepreneur David van Heerden. And Queen Bee herself invites them along with eight of South Africa's hottest ladies to a state-of-the-art home in Stain City for a summer fashion party where she treats her guests to the trendiest fashion and gorgeous food. Now, Catherine Mary Petrulik is a trained artist and patisserie and started her design label, Petrulik, in September 2012 after a trip around India. Petrulik is inspired by the intimate relationship women have with jewelry and her designs are bold and inspiring. With her all-women team, she strives to empower the women that wear her designs as well as those she employs. Welcome to The Loft, Catherine. Hi, ladies. I am I such a fan. Love everyone, you. Yeah, everyone who watches the show knows that I'm always in Petrulik. Yeah. Yes, I didn't. I know that you are two of my favorite brand ambassadors. Well, yes. she's well, both one thing because there's always something edgy about your yeah. jewelry, but you've got quite an interesting story leading up to how you became a jewelry designer. Yes, I am. Um, I studied fine arts at Michaela's, and then I'm also a trained patissier. And then I was traveling around India on long train rides, and I started to collect a trousseau of interesting objects. And on these 36 hour train rides, I'd like wrap and make and weave. And then I returned home to South Africa and I was really broke and hustling and doing a thousand jobs. And I started to make these at night and I'd wear them and people would buy them straight off my neck wow. for very cheap. I didn't understand Amazing. my value at that point. And then later on I started to realize, hey, there's something there. And I designed a collection and then Laleso saw my, you know, Laleso, you have friends. Oh, yes. 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 Um And the pieces were shown on, um, yeah, it was Mercedes-Benz Fashion Week. Yeah. Um, spring, summer 2012, and I've just been following the demand since then. So it's been oh, an incredible yeah. journey. So you've brought a few pieces for us here today. Yes. Let's have a look at these gorgeous girls are wearing. I'm Laleso's biggest fan, like literally, and, and yours, but oh my goodness, that is heaven. I need that. Bonnie, you need that actually. Yeah, that is so beautiful. Take us through some of the pieces that you've brought. Okay, so basically, um, this is my collection, my spring summer collection called Lena, because I spent two and a half months in Italy at an art residency outside of Florence. Oh, um, and wow. I was given a studio um, and worked with other artists from across the world, multiple disciplines. Wow, hard life, eh? Yeah, tough, <laughs> tough, tough, tough in Italy. Um, and so each of these pieces really are inspired about my time, by my time there. So, for example, that was like going into all the cathedrals and all the ornamentation on Renaissance art, you know. Um, wow. And so that's kind of those like that, that sort of motif. Um, oh. This one, for example, was at the pool at Villa Lena. They had these umbrellas that were Soul of Its Stripes, who's an artist. And so I kind of mimicked that color combination. Oh, wow. And the bracelets are almost supposed to look like lilos. Yeah. You know what I mean? So yeah. it really has that kind of like slightly. Savers. Exactly. I've so got to have that set. <laughs> yeah, Thank it's you. gorgeous. Yeah. Have you started selling overseas? Yes, um, I'm, we export to 14 countries and um, oh, we wow. supply Selfridges as one of our uh, main kind of stores. So Incredible. Wow. Um, Hello, Twala. Ooh la la. That neck piece is insane. <laughs> so for that one is like, if you've ever been to Italy, you'll know like the classic Italian drink when it's hot in the late afternoon is Aperol Spritz. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to really encapsulate that and make a neck piece. This one's called Aperol. So it's got that like tangy, slightly weird yellow kind of, not yellow, orange color. Orange, so that's, yes. So it's yes. supposed to really like give you that feeling of hot, hot summers mm. and yeah. Yeah. And cooling down with an Aperol spritz. Do you work with quite a big team of jewelry makers? Oh, wow. So I've got a team of, right now we're 13. Okay. Um, we are predominantly women, but we do have two very capable, wonderful men. Okay. Um, and yeah, we kind of, the idea is to work with the lineage of ornamentation and jewelry that's inherent in African and Middle Eastern tribology. Yes. Yes. Is that you can bring meaning and purpose and confidence into the jewelry making process. All right. right. Well, uh, ladies, do you want to come and have a seat with us so that we can have a closer look at those amazing pieces? Oh, wow. Oh, wow. What inspired this last incredible. piece that Candace is wearing? 
Um, so this one was, so um, in Italy, obviously, you've got a large, because of Mussolini, they've got a lot of this kind of futurist styles mm -hmm. um, yes. and, and the motifs of kind of art deco, like is, that's kind of mimics exactly that. You'll have these brocadings on buildings. And I kind of mimic that out oh of Well, speaking materials. about an amazing in, in, international discipline, <laughs> Danila has been making I'm an incredible dish for us. I think it looks too good to pick <gasps> up your looks hands. Amazing. Oh my gosh. Danilo? You're welcome to take one. This is a, I'm going to try to get this right again. It's a <laughs> barbecue glaze. He's feeding the models. Fish in a roll with. <laughs> Toasted bun or something. It's, wow. It's on our website, afternoonexpress.co.za. Well, wow. That Sounds looks really delicious. Been a bit of fun for now. Thank you so much for joining us today. Until tomorrow, we're going to be having fun on Friday. <laughs> Ciao. Bye. Happy eating. Wow. That looks so Coming up tomorrow on Afternoon Express, we catch up with comedian and musician Snan Dada and Durban based alternative rock band Gangs of Ballet treat us to a live acoustic performance. Another Feel Good Production. Hi, YouTubers. Thank you so much for watching the show. Be sure to not miss another episode by clicking subscribe right over there. <laughs> and we'll see you every day. Afternoon Express. Enjoy.